So our next speaker uh, this afternoon is Sri Mendel. As I said, uh, Sri is a research entomologist with the Agricultural Research Organization in uh, Israel, and we're very happy to have him share their experiences on avocado in Israel. Thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you for coming, and thank you for the invitation to allow me to tell you something what is going on in Israel with this nasty pest, I would say. But first of all, let me tell you something about uh, avocado in Israel. Well, avocado, everything start in the early days of the last century. You see that the first avocados uh, trees were introduced in 1908. Later on, uh, in, later on, they start the first grafted trees. And uh, only in 1960, uh, we began to export avocado to Europe. In Europe, it's still the, our main market for exporting avocado. And actually, about 60% of the avocado production is, being, uh, is sent to Europe. Here you see some information about the avocado plantation in Israel. You see we cultivate uh, several uh, variety. The main one is Haas, and uh, the proportion of Haas is increasing by year. Here you can see the uh, changes in the avocado area in the country, and avocado is still being planted, although some growers uh, have a second thought about whether to plant more land with avocado, but eventually the new avocado plantation, uh, planting of new avocado is, is going on. Well, uh, we endure several species of pests which attack avocado in Israel. Actually, there are quite many insects that develop in the plantation. Many of them are scale insects, strips, white flies, and all of them are not considered important pests. However, they are waiting because the biological balance is very fragile. Uh, although you see a list of pests, most of these pests are actually not a big problem and we can live with them without any treatments. However, lately, with the establishment of the in Ambrosia beetle, everything is changed. The avocado in Israel is almost an organic uh, production. And that gave us an edge when we send the avocado to, especially to the West European countries. Now it not seems to be anymore if we will not find a good solution uh, for the problem. This is the uh, map, more or less, of Israel, and you can see the uh, map of the annual rainfall, which gives you some information about the sites. Uh, okay, okay, these are the six uh, avocado areas in the country. Uh, those number two and three is where the beetle and the fungus already occur. So in other areas, in the south here, number one, or in the inner valley, western Galilee and north Galilee, the beetle and the, or the problem, I should say, is not yet there. Usually it's a bit difficult at first to see the problem because the first infested branches or usually inside the canopy, like you see here. So usually the uh, growers and the extension people tend to ignore these spots, which are not very clear on this uh, slide. Oh, something wrong here. Okay. However, after pruning, you begin to see the typical symptom of uh, persitol. Those 
volcanic sugars, as you called it here, and they are very conspicuous. So it's very easy to see them, and you know immediately that you have you are dealing with with the beetle. However, you okay, need a, I, mean, need to point to the... I need to point to okay. Oh, in, in later stage, when the plantation become heavily infested. The, those white stains are all over the tree, and they are very big, especially on the trunk and the main branches, as you can see here. And the first symptom of is branch wilting, like you see here. Usually the wilting may be very fast if the beetle attack uh, small diameter branches, and when the beetle attack uh, thick, large diameter stems or branches, it takes sometimes more than a year until you see the first sign of wilting. Okay, again here, for example, you see a, a typical branch, the penetration spot is here, and it takes the branch to die within several months. Okay, later on, uh, the beetle attack different parts of the canopy. They usually prefer the medium part of the stem, but as the population increase, you will see them in any parts of the tree. Sometimes when the population is very high, they go after the fruits, although they are unable to develop in fruits, but they, they, this may happen. Again, he, here the attack was in this part of the tree, and after a couple of months, you can see the dead branch over here. However, it took some time until the people realized what is going on. By the way, this is another typical scenario. When you see a lot of fruits, shedding fruits, of infested tree. The tree looks fine, green, but it loses most of the fruits. And this is also something happened, branch break, and you see the break, the, the breaking point. Sometimes it's because of the galleries inside the branch. Sometimes it's because it seems that the branch loses flexibility, and when it's laden with a lot of fruits, then it it sometimes, after sometimes it breaks. Like this, for example, this particular branch, the breaking point, you don't, you don't see any galleries in, those, in this, this particular breaking point, but it's very typical to what you see here, to plantations that are already infested uh, by the beetle. The grower, first of all, didn't realize they are dealing with something new. What you can see here is, a, typical symptom of persitol, which are not related to the beetle. For example, mechanical injury may simulate the same symptom. So the first thing the grower in Israel needed to distinguish is between the mechanical injury, like here, and the typical symptom caused during penetration of the beetle. So it, there, it's not too difficult to distinguish between those two uh, typical symptoms. However, at first, the growers tend to ignore these signs because they thought that they already saw such a thing. So they don't need to worry about that. At the moment, the beetle or the problem occurs only in Israel here. And I saw it will spread. It takes some time, but it will spread to the neighboring country, and all neighboring country uh, cultivate uh, avocado. This is the situation in Israel uh, in two, 2010. The green spots on the map are the avocado areas, and this is the area which was covered by the problem in 2010. And this is the area which is covered today, after two years. So you can see that the spread is quite rapid. These are the typical symptoms on the stem. 
You can see the white sugar adheres, and after a while, part of the sugar disappear, and what you see is a canker like this, a black spot surrounding with white stuff. Okay, I'll do it quickly. No. Oh, well, you have to give me more time. <laughs> okay, this is one of the plantation where they begin to see the symptom only after the, the pruning. Sorry about that. Okay. I would like your attention to two things. First of all, is the, the syndrome behavior. Well, at first, when the problem begins to develop in a certain plantation, it doesn't affect the yield. So people were not complaining. They saw the sign on the wall, but fruit production was okay. So it takes about two years until the yield began to decline, and then it's too late. Because at first, don't worry about the, the symptom. Another thing which is very important is the management uh, with related to irrigation and damage progress. Those that irrigate store their lands with more water than needed usually suffer more than those that irrigate uh, with the amount of the minimum needed. There is also, also the issue of the grower attitude. Uh, at first, the inclination of the, grow, the grower was to, to minimize or ignore the potential uh, problems. And even now, they, make, they can repeat the same mistake. They're looking for easy solution, which is applying insecticides, rather than realize that in order to cope with the problem, you need an integrated approach. Here, for example, you see the differences between two cultivars, the us, which is very susceptible, and Ettinger, which is much less susceptible on most sites. And uh, however, in another site, you see differences, although the sample size of the Ettinger is not very, very big, very large, but again, you see that in this particular site, there is no much difference between uh, Ettinger and us. We tested that, so what you can see here, we actually forced the beetle to penetrate Hass and Ettinger trees. And this is the typical symptom or typical sign that the beetle actually penetrate the wood. And after five days, you begin to see the symptom on the susceptible trees. You don't see the symptom uh, so quickly on Ettinger, but only on us. And then after we saw the symptom, actually we checked the wood, and what, the, what the important for us in this particular case is to measure the level of penetration and the, and the establishment, uh, the spread of the fungus inside. So this is the penetration point, this is the spread of the fungus, and in this case, you don't see any spread of the fungus. And he, actually, we compare the, what we consider susceptible variety, the us, to Ettinger. And what you can see here is the has, the Ettinger above, and the us below. And you can see that the beetle managed to penetrate and establish itself in Ettinger at has. As what's a big, well, more suitable, but if you consider the number of cases the fungus established, you see that in all cases of has the fungus established, but only in three uh, cases the fungus managed to establish in Ettinger. Okay, the picture repeats itself. We measure the susceptibility or the relative susceptibility of different varieties by comparing the density of penetration spots, which you know by now it's not too complicated. And in most cases, you see that the has here, sorry, has here is, is the most susceptible. Ettinger is less susceptible. Again, another plantation, Fino and has are the most susceptible. Other are less susceptible. Another example of mature uh, trees, 
No us in this case, but Nabal, which I suppose you have it is here, seems to be more susceptible than the others. Another, I would like to uh, pay uh, uh, your attention to the already mentioned by Richard, the Castabin plants, which are an important reservoir uh, of the beetle. And it's very easy to spot those infested trees. And another issue is the non-host species. In this case, persimmon in Israel seems to be extremely sensitive. And you can see the typical sign, the peach out of the gum, black gum, on the branches. Actually, the beetle caused damage to this tree, although there is no establishment of the beetle and neither the, the fungus. You see the sign here. Sorry about that. Okay. You see, you can you remove the bark, you look inside. Usually the xylem is not infested, but the tree may suffer. Okay, and I will finish here. This is the last slide. So, so far what I can say, there is no good solution uh, for the problem. The conspicuous penetration points make the monitoring and then uh, the treatment uh, feasible for the moment, preventive management, including sanitation, will be the best option. Thank you.